my video cut off, so I was talking about these uh, aluminum foil containers. Um, so, so they're good for placing your plants. So you can put your plants here and another here, your house plants, or your plants outside on a shelf that you're. And then, if you save the lid, you can plant your put soil in here, sow your seeds, and put the lid on top, and it'll keep it humid and warm so you can do your plant starts if you poke holes in here or another use for this is um, don't poke holes in there and put your house plants or whatnot here and then when you water your plants it'll save a little bit in there or you conversely you can put a little bit of water in there and then put your plants in so they can bottom water from the bottom instead of from the top which supposedly is healthier for your plants and another way you can use this is just to wash it out and reuse it for like when you want to bake some stuff like cinnamon rolls or or buns or something like that or so you can pop this back in the oven or you can pop it into your toaster with something on it and toast up some breads and whatnot um, you could also make yourself another like lasagna type dish or uh, some kind of Alfredo, you can make your own chicken Alfredo in such a container and rebake it as well with some aluminum foil on top. So these are actually very, very useful. And once you've, you know, messed it up enough, um, you can just wash it and then throw it into the recycle bin. So it has given it many uses. It has given it many lives before getting rid of it if you um, don't want to spend money on growing trays and such. Hi everyone. Um, so I wanted to talk to you about recycling or upcycling or reusing um, different things. So here I have a container that used to hold rocket apples, apples that I bought from the store because our apple tree has given us tiny little apples um, last year. Uh, of which was eaten by something like raccoons or squirrels or something. I'm not really sure. I didn't see the animal. Um, so these are our eggs from our chickens. And um, so I ran out of those cartons because I haven't had to buy eggs in a long time. And if I do get cartons from friends and family, uh, it's far and few between. So I gotta make do with finding ways to uh, put the eggs in something. So I put them in this um, container that used to hold um, hold apples. Another thing you could do, um, because the purpose of keeping this originally was so that I could sow seeds in it. It's quite tall. I could just poke holes at the bottom and put soil halfway or three quarters of the way and then put seeds in there and then it has a top and it's clear it'll allow sunlight in and it would be good for um, sowing seeds early in the in well in the late winter early early spring so here I have a mochi container it had mochi in it and the eggs fit perfectly in there if you want to give um, eggs to friends or family or whatever just half a dozen or um, just to carry it in from the outside and it fits perfectly and then you could just put saran wrap over it and it'll be secure and you know it won't um, it won't fall apart or break or whatnot another thing I like to reuse or recycle or upcycle is a container like this originally I had no use for it and so I just um, washed it out and put it in the recycle bin for the city however it's actually quite useful um, like you could poke holes in it and sow seeds in this if you like and it's about the size of a seed tray or you could use it without holes as a seedling um, water catcher tray or so you could put little pots in it and um, and when you water it or whatnot it can catch water and then you can you know transfer the the pots out individually or whatnot but recently I figured out something so 
I just cut this at the seam, this clamshell container, and there you have two clear um, trays that can hold um, like your your house plants in them, so that the water doesn't leak on your furniture and it's clear. Or which I, I have that in my kitchen, so I have two big pot potted plants that are sitting um, on one of these so the soil and the water doesn't get into my grout and into my kitchen you know on the countertops and another thing you can do is place it and put your your sauces the ones that like soy sauce sriracha sauce and whatnot and it's clear so no one can see like in your pantry or something and it's really not expensive at all uh, I mean it doesn't cost you a, a single thing it's clear and you don't have to go to the Dollar Tree you can put like snacks in there um, lined up and you know pull it out like a like a little tray so it's actually really handy and you didn't have to spend a dollar even at the Dollar Tree or a dollar twenty-five these days Another thing I like to do is I like to save these um, twisty tie things, uh, whether they come from some kind of grocery uh, or just from uh, just. So what I do with these is I t I kind of like wrangle my branches of like peppers, pepper branches together or other things and I twist it or tomatoes tomato branches kind of wrangle them together so that they can have a more upright um, upright upright position so that they don't slump over use a stake tie it to a stake so these come in handy and I don't have to buy uh, too many things I, I mean I have I have yarn and I have uh, twine and stuff like that I can use but these are good because I don't have to like try to tie it um, and it, it just secures it in a simpler way and I could cut it more slack or less slack because it's opened this way it's harder to tie things like uh, like my goji canes I tied it with some yarn I got all the branches together and I tied it with one piece of yarn but I think this is a really good idea too for my um, for my chili pepper plant I, I did that so with these aluminum foil things you can also use it for barbecue so like when you barbecue meat or whatnot or you roast stuff in the oven you stick it in the oven with some foil on top or like um, when you barbecue stuff you wash one of these out from Costco uh, from your food and then you have it nice and clean and dry and after you barbecued chicken or barbecued you know beef or something like that or a steak you could just set it right here and it'd be um, you can rest there and then uh, you can transfer it to a nice serving tray afterwards so it's quite useful. So here I have a carafe from a particular um, coffee, instant coffee. I didn't used to drink instant coffee. I used to drink um, like, you know, coffee from coffee bean that you brew. Um, however, recently, just for convenience sake, I've been buying these um, instant coffee. And I doll it up. I put cinnamon and other things in it to make it tasty and fragrant <clears throat> and so what I and I've, if you haven't tried bullet the bullet coffee try it it's really good um, you just stir in a lot of things to to make your coffee um, more useful you know like MTC oil and stuff like that so what I do with these containers I also upcycle these containers um, I use the jar just actually just to straight fix coffee in when I get to the very bottom um, and I just use that as a glass but you know it's quite bulky it's not easy to handle so even what you can do is convert it to a carafe so afterwards you when you're all done with the coffee just wash it out and 
you know, wash out the cap and just fill it with drinking water at night and when you need and you have the cover and then when you need to you can pour the water into this cup or you can just drink it straight from this and it has a cover so you know dust and things don't go in your water or another thing you can use this for this one is not quite conducive to a vase vase but it can be um it's quite pretty or another thing you can use it is after you've peeled off the label it's to, for food storage you could you know stick macaroni in there cereals uh chia seeds uh all kinds of stuff dried goods spices uh my mom has some um juju be uh, dates or uh, stuff like that that we dehydrate and then we just stick it in there and we can pull it out and and rehydrate it and use it in different things so it's it's a really handy container and another thing you can use it for like um, so this brand is as you can see here I, I don't prefer any one particular brand to another um, the tasters choice um, one is square at the top and the base is more square and that one can be used for food storage as well and it can also be used as a vase uh, like a square vase and this is such nice glassware it's hard to break these because it's so thick and heavy and so sturdy it's so useful like you you really don't need to and I love the way this is shaped it has like a nice hourglass sort of shape really cute um, but yeah you don't need to go out and buy too many jars just use what you have on hand so I hope that helps another use for this is um, keeping it in its clam shape I have a storage box like a shoe size box that I use to store my seeds in but if you if you have like particular types of seeds like this the, one whole thing like this can hold all your cold hardy seeds or uh, all your flower your flowers uh, flowering seeds or you know uh, your summer and fall seeds or whatnot and you could have like a couple stacked and it would be sorted by type what seeds by season or by type and um, and it closes really well closes really easily you just snap it shut and it'll keep your seeds together and protect it so this is a great thing to use for any types of things or you could use it for children's art supplies put their all their markers in one pencils in another crayons in another uh, highlighters, scissors, whatnot. It, it's great. They can use it. Um, you, you know, um, you know. Uh, it won't, it won't be too difficult to replace either. So some of the things that I like to save on this property are cans. So I have soup cans and. Uh, for the most part, we don't buy too many canned products. We don't get canned green beans or canned corn. Uh, we usually get canned soups. So, like cream of mushroom, clam chowder, um, different soups, uh, chicken noodle soup. So, what you can do is clean it out, take off the label, punch a couple holes in here, and spray paint the outside of the can and spray paint it and then you've got yourself a little pot and when you spray paint it it won't rust so I have an example here just a moment so this one's about three years old and it did finally rust uh, because I didn't put a heavy layer of spray paint on it so over time it did start to rust and um, it you know it got scratched on and everything and it has a, um, a hole from the can opener there and on the other side and of course I didn't spray paint the bottom so that's why 
it is rusty but so that is something to keep in mind if you don't spray paint it well then it definitely will uh, rust however I, I use it for various things I could use it to a clean one to scoop up the chicken feed for the chickens in the mornings um, I use them for cute little plant pots so let me show you my succulents Currently, I'm using the can upside down to um, prevent myself from falling and poking my eyes out with onto these um, rebar poles. So I've got some planters, and if you just use these plastic ones over time, they start to get brittle from the sun and they start to break and chip and so I kind of protect them with the tin cans that I've spray painted. Same thing, this one's been out in the elements for a while. I love tea and hot cocoa containers as well and it stands the test of time. It's way better than plastic in your environment. <laughs> Don't laugh, this is um, some cereal container that I put the other container into and more spray painted ones of course I just added these new propagated these new uh, euphorbia and I'm gonna eventually spray some more cans for them as little pots I'm so excited my salvia made it over the winter last year I had a blue salvia sage salvia and it didn't make it it was too um, it was too cold or something or too hot because where I planted it and the time that I planted it it didn't get a nice start before it started burning so this one I planted it since last spring and it's been in here amongst some plants and um, it's in this concrete garden bed and it I didn't cover it this year with the plastic. Um, I just grew brassicas in here which are cold tolerant. So what I did was to protect it I put this cute little cute little plant shelving up against this edge to protect everything that's over in this corner. And here I've got a baby nasturtium and it's so cute because it's like a pink blush color. Right, there's another one with the yellow center and another one and my cilantro coriander is going to seed. That's wonderful. I'll just harvest it, the seeds, and throw it around and make more. There is some purple succulent that I just threw a couple into the ground and it did fantastic and I love the way it looks it's so pretty and that dark purple against this the brassicas it's gorgeous and then I've got some nasturtiums over here that are orange bright orange with that purple leaf from the ashitaba my chili peppers did great friendly reminder that when you do use spray paint to wear a mask so that you don't get the fumes into your lungs and stuff because they're it's pretty nasty and another reminder is try to wear goggles because it does overspray and what I do is I stick it in a small box cardboard box and I have it upside down if you want to cover if you want to um, spray paint the bottom or I have it this way and I'll use I'll put a box around it I'll put it into the box and um, all sides are closed except the side facing you and then I would just spray paint it and turn spray paint it and turn spray paint it and turn and then if you want to get the bottom or if you have it already inverted you just get the top last and I just try not to use too many chemicals so sometimes they do get pretty rusty, such as this pretty rusty looking one, but it was a large one. It's a shame I didn't paint it, but it got like this. And after a while, you know, you can chuck it if you don't like it. And some people actually like that appearance. 
Um, the best cans are the ones where it's it's it doesn't have an adhesive uh, label. What happens is they they actually um, paint or or they have a covering um, that they paint onto. It's like powder coated or something with the picture of their item on there. And then um, that covering keeps it from rusting on the air in the front here. So you would still have to paint the bottom of it. So FYI. And those are the best ones because you don't have to paint them and add chemicals to the environment. And I usually try not to too much. And another thing that you can recycle and reuse is I have a Costco cookie box that you know you order their their 20 something count cookies and um, it's it's in this little container and it's wonderful because you can have your homemade envelopes with all your um, seeds in there that I showed you in the other video so like every time you ha you gather seeds you stick you let them dry then you stick them in an envelope and label what it is that you have so you could share with friends and family and keep it for a few years and even better is if you actually have store-bought seeds and the packets are a little bit smaller I'm sorry I'm <laughs> struggling with this there we go so you can just have them filed like that so you could have like a box labeled summer veggies, another one for flowers, and another one for winter veggies, and then you can have them organized, you know, alphabetically, or, um, you know, the different types of vegetables, brassicas, root vegetables, etc. And it is so cool. And then all it does, all you have to do is just snap it and it keeps it keeps it well for you and if you're afraid of it busting open um, you could also put it like a big rubber band around it but I mean this is sufficient and it can keep it out of the elements it's wonderful another way to keep seeds is I have several seeds that uh, different kinds of varieties in a huge ziplock bag and it keeps them all dry and out of the elements the only problem with that is that it's hard to look through I have to pull out all the pouches before I could sort through them as opposed to having them in this little container and I can just go like that like it's a file and and look at what I want from my stash so I might move these over um, but I had that great idea and I really love it and also if you wanted to give it as a gift like if you have many varieties of seeds and you put them in the other great idea I have regarding this system is if you um, save lots of seeds like as I do which I have many of them you can get little mini pouches little ziploc bags um, or little envelopes meant for seeds and um, using your own v selections of seeds you can have um, them in the little ziploc bags or the little envelopes all sealed all labeled and put them all in there like a little sampler box and close it up and get, give it to a friend as a gift which is actually one of the coolest things you can give a, a beginner gardener or like little kids or to have a little seed library I think that is so awesome there is another concept that is also known as um, trading or bartering your time for products. So watch the documentary called Time as Money. 
So the documentary Time is Money is just stating that instead of bartering one product for another product, you can also trade. So um, if you have a lot of produce, if you, if you know someone who's a butcher and you have pigs, you could, uh, or cows or whatnot, you could have them using their knowledge and know-how um, break down the pig or the cow for you and then they would get a few cuts out of it and then you would get the rest of it which already exists today in some farm areas um, however like if you know an, an electrician and you need some electrical work at your house you could uh, trade that person with loads and loads of fruit or some other uh, know-how of your own that you that you have some other skill that you may have that the other individual does not have and so that's a good way um, so someone could trade their for their lawn getting mowed every week with another individual's uh, fruit or some other labor if they're good with computers or whatnot they can trade so, uh, for instance someone could help advertise for another individual and the other individual can help have their lawn mode if they have a lawn mowing service or a, or a landscaping business so those are just some ideas to throw out there uh, watch that video time as money Another concept that I don't quite understand that's happening in the U.S. is that people scoff at um, individuals that are not as wealthy or, um, or people who uh, choose, choose to be frugal or choose to use their money in different ways. So there is a lot of that. So I was watching uh, Kate from She's Drinking Coffee and I was mesmerized by how frugal she lives and how um, how well she lives by the, the choices she makes. So she offsets some of her purchases for certain things like furniture and instead she chooses to have like good coffee or she reuses her, her couch from friends and family and whatnot and um, I don't see anything wrong with it. In fact, she was smart enough to go from a small house living on one income, saving enough to buy a second house. And I think that's so fantastic and not many people can do that. So I don't think that anyone should be even scoffing at her because she was smart enough to do such a thing and be financially uh, savvy. So, and so, you know, I hope everyone can keep doing stuff out there that's good for them and good for the environment and also being smart about their finances, such as Pepper Princess. Pepper Princess, sorry. Pepper Princess also lives in a decent home and she buys groceries and other things frugally and she's able to make her make her living just on her own and I think that is really awesome and that's more than a lot of people can accomplish including people who had money who lost it all here is another way to make money I mean not make money but save money and you wouldn't think it but look at this fish tank um, if you have a fish tank that's even bigger than this one. This one's a 10 gallon fish tank. Um, uh, currently, we originally had a betta fish, but currently, um, since the betta fish passed, we got a plecostoma and we had some goldfishes and shrimp and snails. Here's our snail, and our plecostoma is hiding back there. And those are pretty blue rocks. The kids liked the blue. And so what happens is when you pour out the water 
and you um, clean out the fish tank don't throw the water away down the sink um, we siphon it from a tube from up here and it's gravity fed down to a bucket and we do that a, a couple times and then uh, we pour the water um, into our fruit trees under our fruit trees and it's highly full of nutrients and um, because the Placos just um, you know goes doo-doo over here and it has a lot of nutrients from that and plants love that stuff it absorbs all the nutrients from that and so it's kind of like a little cycle um, and then we do that a few times a year and then after the, after that we take the pebbles and rocks out and rinse them out with water and just kind of um, like just kind of like um, swirl them around in our hands to try to knock off as much as we can off the pebbles and then after that we stick it back in the clean pebbles and rocks in here in the plant and the fish and then we fill it up with fresh water again and so the Placos um, gets fresh water the old water gets used in under fruit trees and such and so um, and that's 10 gallons of water that's a whole lot of water that you can feed like two fruit trees in a day and skip a couple days and so and it's full of nutrients and that's the key to how we get a lot of avocados and other fruits around here